it's John. Welcome back to my channel. Now, nearly exactly two years ago, I traveled to the Bay Area and made a short little video about the Caltrain electrification project, and that video just so happened to be my most popular one by far. So I figured with the world and the state that it's in today, an update on this project was long overdue. So today I've got for you a Caltrain electrification project update with footage that I shot in early October 2020. And just by the way, for those that don't know, I'm actually a locomotive engineer for an American Class 1 railroad, which is why I'm in this hotel room right now, and I intend to put up videos about that in the future. So 2020 has been a very busy year for Caltrain, not only with the progress continuing on the electrification project, but also finishing implementation of positive train control, as well as normal corridor construction in the form of rebuilding the stations at Hillsdale and South San Francisco. In July, the first electric multiple unit was finished by Stotler at their plant in Salt Lake City and will be shipped to Pueblo, Colorado for testing shortly. And all of this was of course going on in the background of the global pandemic, which has eliminated most of their ridership and by extension, their budget, due to 70% of their funding coming from passenger revenue. Now to help with this, on November 3rd, the voters of the counties of San Francisco, San Mateo, and Santa Clara have the opportunity to vote for a 1 8 cent sales tax that would be the first dedicated funding for Caltrain. Caltrain already receives money from these counties, but that subsidy isn't guaranteed, and a dedicated stream would help stem the loss of ridership revenue due to the pandemic, as well as provide for upgrades to the system in the future. So to say that 2020 has been a challenging year for Caltrain would be a huge understatement. And as to be expected, progress on the electrification project has been delayed. Now, as Clem from the Caltrain High Speed Rail Compatibility blog pointed out, the pandemic will likely be used as an excuse for delays that already existed before the pandemic hit. With pre-pandemic ridership at an all-time high, access to the corridor was hard to come by. This led to an initial delay in constructing bases for the electrification poles. Now, ideally, the drop in ridership would have led to an acceleration of construction, but for various reasons that doesn't seem to be the case. Take for example this chart about completing the foundations. At the end of September, only 62% of the foundations were complete, and yet they're projecting that more bases will be constructed each month than any previous month of the project. Delays like this have pushed the completion date of the entire project back from September 21 to March 2022. But that projection is based on a condensed testing period, which in my opinion is likely to be delayed itself. And incidentally, not only is the electrification construction delayed, but also the construction of the EMUs by Stadler has also been delayed. And now it looks like the last EMU will be delivered a few months after the construction is finally complete. Now before we get into looking at the current state of the project, let's talk briefly about PTC. The federal deadline for implementing positive train control is December 31st, 2020. Caltrain began working on a communications-based overlay signaling system known as CBOS back in 2011. Due to delays in the project, they canceled the contract for CBOS with Parsons and decided to implement the same PTC system as most freight railroads in this country. Wabtec's Integrated Electronic Train Management System is a proven technology that is used across the country, but due to being bogged down by CBOS, the contract for installing ETMS wasn't signed until early 2018. Full completion of the system is expected to be complete by the end of November 2020, and PTC is currently in use on the corridor, as evidenced by PTC stopping us here while entering San Francisco, but small regulatory hurdles are still left to complete. Leaving approximately a month to spare is certainly cutting it close to the wire. Now let's jump into actually seeing the electrification progress. Construction is very patchy across the corridor, with some sections being quite far along, while a station adjacent to that section might not even have any bases installed. Here is a crude chart that I made to illustrate how far along the project was in early October 2020. In this chart, blue represents base construction, pink represents poles erected, yellow represents initial carrier wires being strung, and green illustrates the completed traction wires being installed. Lighter shades indicate that some construction in this segment has occurred. Here we are outside the San Jose Diradon station, and this section of the parking lot is actually where the future BART station will be. Here at San Jose's Diradon station, you can see most of the poles have been erected, but even as we depart the station, you can see there's already a section where only bases have been installed. You can see here is an example of the duct bank that Caltrain has installed to carry electrical, signaling, and communications cables. Also, upgrades are being performed with the maintenance facility to accommodate future electric trains. 
These upgrades include lengthening the maintenance pit used to inspect the underside of the trains, installing walkways to access the overhead pantographs, and installing cameras to inspect the electrical equipment on top of the EMUs. As you will see along the corridor, there are several electrical substations that appear to be largely complete. The first section of wiring that's installed is north of the Santa Clara station. Almost all of the poles are installed between Santa Clara and Lawrence. At the Lawrence Station, you can see work was being performed on the northbound tracks, so the train had to stop on the crossing to allow passengers to board. As you can see here, it appears all the poles are installed between Lawrence and Sunnyvale. Leaving Sunnyvale, you can see a section of wiring that appears to be complete. Here you can see the style of poles change. It's nice to compare the two electrification systems here between the VTA light rail and Caltrain south of the Mountain View station. Electrification is nearly complete between the stations of San Antonio and California Avenue. And there's nothing too exciting here until we change from green poles to yellow at Palo Alto. And once we leave the Palo Alto station, it's back to green. I must say I find it interesting that this bridge over the San Francisco Creek appears to be surviving the modernization of Caltrain. As you can see here at Menlo Park, there aren't even bases installed. As we approach the junction of Dumbarton Spur, you can see there are only bases installed between 5th Avenue and Woodside Road in Redwood City. But as we return to two tracks, there are actually poles installed. However, as we depart San Carlos, you can see there are not even any bases installed along the elevated right-of-way to Belmont. Here is the beginning of the work on the new Hillsdale station. You can see the electrification bases have been installed concurrent with construction of the grade separation and new station.
North of San Mateo, we again see wiring installed until we hit the station at Burlingame. North of Millbrae, you can see a section where the wiring looks completely finished. This section of electrification extends through the San Bruno station. Most of the stations along this corridor have not had any visible signs of electrification, but as you can see here, the work appears done. As we approach the South San Francisco station, you can see the new platform is under construction. At the existing station, an electrical substation is being built. On the north side of the station, bases have been installed while track work continues. North of the Bayshore station, you can see the electrification work is finished in the tunnels. You can see instead of using conventional wiring, they've installed what appears to be overhead aluminum rails to provide power. After the second tunnel, you can see a lot of construction is going on in one of the last industrial areas of San Francisco, but there hasn't been much work on the electrification here. Upon exiting the third tunnel, there appears to be no work at the 22nd Street station. And finally, as we approach 4th and King, there doesn't appear to be even any bases installed, much less any work on the platforms. Obviously, the current pandemic has impacted this project, but I would think this period of reduced traffic on the line would be a perfect opportunity to try and get the project back on schedule. To wrap up this video, here tucked away at the 4th and King station are two X Amtrak AEM-7s that Caltrain acquired to test their electrification system. Originally, the electrification project was supposed to be further along before they received their first Stotler EMU. It appears these have been in storage for a while. Only time will tell if these locomotives will indeed be used on this corridor. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this video, please subscribe for more updates. And also while I was in California, I shot a ton of footage on various other construction projects. So just a few examples of videos I got coming out in the future are in LA, I uh, got a video about the Purple Line, the Crenshaw LX Line, the Regional Connector, as well as the California High Speed Rail Construction in the Central Valley. It was actually a lot to see there and I'm just glad that I had the chance to actually see it. So thanks a lot for watching my video, and remember to go watch that full cab ride video in my description, and I will see you all soon.